Well, that's what's happening here. Uh, what about in the US? Later today, Donald Trump will be visiting a medical supply business in Pennsylvania, a pivotal state in the upcoming uh, presidential election. The president is expected to use the trip to announce the economy can reopen safely and life in the US can soon return to normal, a move that's been criticised by the country's top disease experts. Joining us now to talk about it in more detail, how the president has handled the pandemic is the lawyer and political women's rights activist, Dr. Shola Moshogabimu and US political commentator and journalist Scotty Nell Hughes. I give it my best shot every time, Doctor. I hope I'm getting closer. <laughs> Love you, Kate. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Scotty, as well. Lovely to see you as well. Ladies, um, added pressure ahead of the presidential election. Uh, nevertheless, um, Doctor, it looks as though his polling is doing pretty well. Well, that's what the polls show. I think we should look at the facts of the matter. The fact that Donald Trump has been nothing but an abject failure in his mismanagement of the COVID response. And the testament to his dereliction of duty is the fact that the United States has the highest number of coronavirus deaths, 85,000 people. And 1.4 million have contracted uh, the, 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 the virus under his mismanagement. Bear in mind that it is no defense to say that those numbers could have been much worse. When we know that those the preventable deaths, number of preventable deaths could have been much less. It is not defense to say that he shut the, you know, the borders to um, travel restrictions to China. When we know for a fact that from February 2nd, when those restrictions were put in place, more than 40,000 people have traveled to and from China to the United United States. The bottom line is this, instead of this president to have taken the kind of leadership that is required at this time, which is to ramp up testing, focus on, you know, tracing isolation, he spent his time tweeting, inciting protesters to liberate states in direct, you know, conflict with self-isolation and lockdown rules. What he's done is to show that he has an utter disregard for life. And I think that should speak very strongly during this election process. Scotty? Well, we can tell that this is not going to be the walk in the park, that a campaign against a man who has been literally charged by eight women for assault, including the latest allegations by Tara Reid, who we now find out this past week uh, has been deeply involved in a conspiracy and a witch hunt involving the highest of our intelligence, like Joe Biden, a very weak candidate. It is not going to be as easy for President Trump in 2020 to get elected, especially considering it's more not a, what, what the great doctor would say, but more because there's a lot of people out of work here in the United States. They are hurting in the main street. That was one of the reasons why people in the U.S. elected him in 2016 was to put them back to work and to put America first. And after the, la the events of literally the last eight weeks, President Trump is going to have a really hard time touting the economy, touting the job loss when you're looking at the numbers, the abysmal numbers that America is facing right now. But here is what you have seen transition the last two weeks with the Trump administration, the campaign. It's no longer the federal government's fault. He's putting the blame exactly where it belongs. And that is on the Democratic leadership of the individual states and cities around this country. You look at New York, headed up by Democrat Governor uh, Governor Cuomo, and you look at the reason why our numbers are so high is because you literally have 19.45 million people that live in New York and 27,000 of those deaths in the United States numbers that the doctor quoted are from that state. And you look at the Democratic leadership around the country. The president is properly putting the blame where it is due. And it's that Democratic leaders in the local government okay. in the United States. Doctor? Well, you know, you know that I'm going to disrespect, I'm going to, I'm going to respectfully disagree with Scotty. Bottom line is the mismanagement of the Trump's administration didn't start in January 2020. It started in April 2018 when his administration dismantled the United States um, team that is meant to respond to pandemics. They had the, the, the book, the guide on what to do. But no, just out of pure spite, Donald Trump had to break down what Obama had built and which, of course, knocked him out. But when this huge pandemic came, came about, we talk, you talk about the economy. Bear in mind that over 22 million people in the states have now filed for unemployment benefits. That even questions how strong the economy was in the first place. I, I mean, under any circumstance, I think any country would struggle with this pandemic. But over 22 million people, that's a lot. And trying to put the blame on Joe Biden or on the Democrats. <clears throat> 
It's just absolute rubbish. This is a, a page out of Donald Trump's playbook to blame other people. First of all, he, he praised China, then blamed China. He praised the WHO, then praised the, the WHO. And now, of course, it's all about Joe Biden and Obama. They've had nothing to do with this. Trump has been in that office, the Oval Office, for what, four years now? Okay. And he's still blaming other people. His okay. lack of coordination, the lack of testing has directly impacted the number of deaths. He is culpable for the number of people that have died, the preventable deaths in this coronavirus pandemic in the United States. Okay, Scotty, um, in 2016, President Trump won the vote of the older voters, age 65 and over, by 53% to 45 over Clinton. They're the exact demographic that are struggling the most as a result of COVID-19. How aware do you think his administration is of that? Because to the outside world, it doesn't look as though they are that aware given his approach to COVID-19. Well, right now, obviously, that is the one demographic that's been hit the hardest around the world, but definitely here in the United States. But you have to look at rules presented by Governor Cuomo and other Democrats around our country that forced nursing homes to take COVID patients as late as March 25th, saying that you cannot just charge them, you have to take these patients. And that's why this disease was able to spread so rampantly amongst the older generations and then those that we should be caring for the most was because these government, these Democrat leaders were forcing it down. And I can't find it quite humorous that any Democrat right now would not take responsibility for the United States being prepared for it when during the time that we should have been preparing, which was December, January, the beginning of February, they were so focused on trying to impeach this president and not putting the focus on China, where we should have been calling for accountability oh, on correct let me numbers. Help you out that that study. Right there is what Hold on, doctor. I did not interrupt you. That right there, you cannot as a Democrat sit there and in any way not share in some of the blame why our country was not prepared. You weren't even focusing in on it. You had people like Nancy Pelosi, as well as Chuck Schumer, really insulting the president and making making him a, a quite grievance because he shut down our country as he did to China. The only reason why he could have shut it down was because there was so much pushback and calls for racism and hatred when the president tried to shut it down from China, when he finally was able to focus on instead of this witch hunt and scam of a $32 million investigation from the Mueller report. Oh my goodness. Look, Scotty, I know you're all for Trump, but I know that you realize how that does not make any sense. You can't be blaming other people for what Donald Trump should be taking responsibility for. You want to talk about how the virus spread? I'll tell you how it spread. It spread because Donald Trump called it the flu. It spread because Donald Trump downplayed the seriousness. It spread because it wasn't until, it was not until March that Donald Trump started talking about lockdown and self-isolation and then within two weeks said to backpedal because he thought of, he thought the economy could come back the country could open up by easter which is totally wrong it is because donald trump is telling the public that they can use disinfectant and he <laughs> to cure covid 19 that he's he using words to actually mislead the people it is because donald trump isn't taking the time to be a leader donald, 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 donald trump, donald trump is attacking the press That's donald trump is attacking the press and their freedom to hold the government to account donald trump is acting anytime you put a strong woman in front of donald trump he acts like the petty petulant fragile man baby that he is he just frazzles look okay. bottom line is this responsibility is with him and he has messed up and him alone nobody else see that's the problems with the democrats he's today. in the seat they literally put he's up, the you will not take any responsibility the either. they're involved on trump administration no doubt but democrats share an equal amount if not more to the death oh my god how and around the world absolutely how? and the people like dr fauci who was saying back in february this is just like the common cold the medical staff that were surrounding him that did not warn him of this pandemic and that did not allow him to shut that's down our not birth. true he was uh, one yeah, week back in January. Dr. Fauci was saying this is going to be no big deal don't go out there and buy face masks they were the no. ones that were misleading our country no 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 he was one way back in early january scotty everybody knows that but he played it down he you kept did. saying nobody else you were talking about that he kept saying that the, the virus would disappear like like magic and he kept causing the, the flu that's he the world health organization was doing the entire All public accountable ladies 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 when you ladies. listen to ladies. ladies 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 we're out of time. It's good to talk to you. No. Thank you very much. Thank you.
That woke you up, didn't it? Now, we've long known about the so-called digital divide, where people without easy access to the internet or mobile telephones miss out on vital services. But there are concerns that this gap is only getting wider as more and more providers move to online-only services during the lockdown. As MPs call for action, one charity is taking matters into its own hands by giving out donated smartphones to vulnerable people. Rob Dorset has this report on struggling to bridge that digital divide. 